Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Passive Income Lifestyle Series. I'm your host, Travis Watts, the Director of Investor Education here at Ashcroft Capital. Got a very exciting topic for you today. What we're talking about is the value add mindset and how to maximize profit. Now, disclaimers, as always, is never financial advice, legal advice, tax advice. So please always seek licensed financial advice when it comes to your own investing. Now, with that top of mind, I do talk a lot about value add here on the channel as it pertains to real estate. In fact, nearly every deal I've ever invested in since 2009 has had a value add component. So what does value add mean? Well, in my own simple definition, what it means is uh, you're buying something older, perhaps outdated, perhaps having some problems that need to be fixed, and you're gonna come in and fix those problems and renovate and make it a nicer, newer place so that you increase, hopefully, the value and at least the desirability of what it is you own, in that case, real estate. So I give a lot of credit to my parents for instilling this value add type of mentality from a young age. Now, keep in mind, my parents were not real estate investors. They were not wealthy individuals. They had a value add mindset for a different reason than I have. And their reason was to save money. They were always looking at how do we cut the budget. Now, as an investor, my motivation has always been how do I maximize profit? But the cool thing is that a value add mindset can help you in either case or in both. So what are some examples other than real estate where you could apply a value add mentality or strategy? I'll say number one would be cars or vehicles. You know, it can be awfully difficult. In fact, nearly impossible. If you went and bought a brand new car today at market value from a dealership, and then the hope was in three, four or five years to sell that car for a profit or a higher price than what you paid. So instead, I'll share a quick story about a car that my wife and I bought in 2020 during the pandemic. We went to a dealer, believe it or not, I hardly ever use uh, dealerships, but in this case, it was too good of a deal to pass up. It was a small little mom and pop dealership. We bought a car for $6,500. Now, this car had terrible pictures and you know it needed a new battery and it needed uh, some new tires and a couple of the lights were burned out. It was just really in, in, in bad shape when we bought it. So we negotiated a low price accordingly. And the first thing that we did is we fixed up the car. We fixed all the problems, I detailed it, and we used this car for about two years, put about 20,000 miles on the car and ended up selling it in 2022 for $8,000. Well, how was all of this possible? Well, number one, we bought something used pre-existing and we were able to negotiate the price down. Number two, we fixed all those inefficiencies and we fixed up the car. We kept it in tip top shape the whole time. Number three, when it was time to sell, we didn't go trade in the car and get 50% of the value. We sold it private party, had it cleaned up, had it detailed, took professional pictures, wrote a great description. And I was very open in terms of communication to people about the vehicle. And that made it a much easier process for the next buyer to pick up that car from us. The second item that comes to mind in using a value add strategy outside of real estate is expensive clothing. Now, I don't do this much anymore, but when money was tight and in my early years, I did this quite a bit. And I would go searching for high quality clothing. Usually that would be a, a brand name. And I would find it through outlets that most people weren't going to. So whether that was shopping at like a Goodwill or maybe it was going to garage sales with my parents or maybe it was buying something on eBay and I was getting huge discounts, you know, 80 to 95% off of the original retail price. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. Let's say you're at the mall or some retail store and you pass by a jacket that looks really nice that, you know, you got to have it, right? But that jacket's $200. So let's say you buy it, bring it home, pull the tags off, put it in the wash. You know, you wear it a few times. Now, what do you think that jacket is worth? Probably 10 or 20 bucks at best in most cases. So what if you could be on the other side of that coin as a buyer picking that jacket up for 20 bucks. Then maybe you can enjoy it for a year or two. And if you know how to market and sell online and take good pictures and write good descriptions, you might be able to make a profit and sell the jacket for 50 or 60 bucks. 
And the third item I'll share with you is furniture. Furniture can be very expensive when it's new and it can have very little resale value when it's used. And I'll never forget the story of when I bought my first house out in Colorado, I furnished the entire home used private party negotiating for all the furniture. In fact, there was uh, two leather couches. I knew I wanted brown leather couches to help fill in the living room. That's all I really knew and I wasn't gonna be too strict about it because I was shopping the used market. And this posting came up, had no pictures. It said two brown leather couches in storage unit, good shape, $400 or best offer. And I was like, Excellent. So I took a shot. I GPSed it. It was about 45 minutes from my house. Called the guy. Met him down at the storage unit. He opens up the storage unit. There's the couches. Not in good shape. In terrible shape. They're full of dust and dirt and grime. There was cobwebs on them. They were terrible. So I pulled them out. But the actual leather was in good shape. It was just, you know, they'd been in storage for obviously a long time. So I made him a $350 cash offer. He accepted it. I ran over to a furniture store and picked up a leather restoration kit for 25 bucks. I restored those couches and they almost look brand new. By the way, I did look up the value of those couches later. They sold originally for about $2,000 each. So that original owner went from a $4,000 buy down to $350 to get rid of them, not including how long they were in storage, which was probably, who knows, another $1,000 on top of that in losses. Even crazier, I had furnished this whole house with this used inventory, and I, if I had to guess, I'd say I probably put $5,000 into the house from complete scratch. I'm talking about used appliances and you know used furniture and everything else. And I made a deal when I sold that house. I made a deal to the guy who was going to buy the house from me. Not only did I make a profit off the property itself and by having a roommate and making it a rental for a short period of time, but I said, look, I understand, you know, you, you need this place furnished. He was a pilot that flew between Alaska and Colorado. And I said, you know, it might be nice if you had all the furnishings in here from day one, you wouldn't have to worry about that headache. And I said, how about this? Bring $8,000 in cash to the closing table. You know, we'll do like a little side transaction here and I'll leave all the furniture for you. So I even made a profit on all the furniture. So pretty crazy ROI. And of course I got inflated rents because when I rented that out, it was a fully furnished place to rent. So I made a killing on those deals and a killing is relative, right? Hundreds, thousands, but not hundreds of thousands, but still it was a great strategy. So I could go on and on all day talking about value add philosophy and strategies and other areas in my life where I've used this, but I wanna leave you with three quick takeaways. Number one, it's not what you buy, it's how you buy it. And number two, if you buy used and pre-existing, no matter what we're talking about, you have the ability to negotiate the price down. Number three, if you know how to market and sell, you can absolutely maximize profits on the back end. You're listening to the Passive Income Lifestyle Series. Kind of a short, funny episode for you. Hopefully you enjoyed some of those stories. If you ever want to take a deeper dive, reach out to me, Travis at ashcroftcapital.com. And if you want to learn more about value add multifamily real estate and what we do here at Ashcroft Capital, you can visit ashcroftcapital.com. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. The more you guys engage and do that, it helps the algorithm and videos like this reach more people like you. I truly appreciate you. I truly appreciate you being here. Please share these episodes with anyone you think could find value. Have a great week, and we'll see you in the next episode.